So thank you, everybody, for coming today. <laughs> and thank you for joining us back home. It's a beautiful day in New York City outside, so I am doubly, triply like honored and humbled that you're all here today. I'm very passionate about uh, photography, but I'm also very passionate about marketing and, and sharing, sharing my work online. So my goal for today is to share with you everything that I've learned from growing my own Instagram audience from zero to a thousand followers in 90 days. And I've kind of been growing since then. But you can, you know, I, I'm really proud, you know, I'm not here saying, you know, I've got 100,000 followers or a million followers because I am first and foremost a passionate photographer, not a social media influencer. And that's what I'm interested in. And that's what I'm going to share with you today, how to grow your Instagram audience, whether you're at zero or 200, to the point that's meaningful to you. So to do so in an ethical, meaningful, and real way. Um, so I'll, um, you know, please feel free to follow me at Photo on Instagram. Put the URL up there for Photo Educate, which is a new project that I'm uh, doing together with Steve Simon, uh, which is a workshop directory. So it's a platform to share the best photography workshops with students from around the world. So I'm very passionate about photography education. And many of the things um, we, we cover in Photo Educate and many of the workshops that I run myself are around sharing, sharing our work, sharing your work. And the principles for us, well, principles for me and why we're here today is because we want to learn how to share our work and we want to learn the platform. We want to participate in Instagram, which is the biggest photography platform of all time. And we want to use it to unlock our creativity and get the recognition we deserve and many other, many other reasons too. So, um, come, this is the place I'm, I'm coming from. I'm not talking about you know, building, you know, my uh, influencer business on Instagram and charging people for, for, for posts. I'm here because I'm passionate about photography and I want to share it and I want to connect with other people on Instagram who are also passionate about the same things that, that I am. So I'm going to give you kind of the principles behind social media and in a way the timeless principles. Um, you know, the algorithm is changing all the time and I don't want you to focus on the algorithm. I want you to focus on your craft and the principles of social media because social is the key word. It's about people connecting with each other. And so if we can understand social, we can understand how to meaningfully engage with social media. So I'll be talking a lot about the principles. I'll be talking about the mindset we need to take when we approach social media. And the skills I'll be sharing, kind of helping you build those skills to become more effective and giving you the tools and the techniques you need to make your work more discoverable and the techniques to discover and engage other photographers on Instagram, which contributes to the meaningful experience. And I'm gonna do that while I'm gonna propose a very simple frame, framework on reflection. How did I get to 1,000 followers in 90 days? I put in enough time required to get 11 followers a day. And I'm actually gonna break down the three or four ways on Instagram where you could get five, four, you know, three, followers. So really want to break it down and make it very practical and simple. And this is a framework if, you, if you're at 200 followers and it's meaningful to you to get to 1,000. You know, but if, you're, if you want to go even beyond that, this is the way to grow your following on Instagram. There is no um, magic button. Um, there is no place where you could put money and automatically grow. Well, May, there are less ethical and meaningful ways of doing this, but this is the way that you can continue to grow beyond the thousand, even if you want to. But um, you can take this and use it in any way that's meaningful to you. And I, I want to acknowledge that it is, as I said, like it is a modest approach for me because I'm not interested in you know 100,000 followers because I'm not interested in spending six hours a day on my phone, you know, like commenting to people, but you can, okay? So I want, I want to make it clear. These are the same techniques you can use to do that if, 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 you, if you want to, um, and that other people are using, or maybe other people are hiring marketing agencies to, to you for them, but 
this is the way um, I, that, that really worked for me. And what was really interesting when I taught about what does a thousand followers mean is there is a thousand people at a Foo Fighters concert. And I never imagined that I would have a thousand people following me because that's what Foo Fighters do, but maybe they get more, more than that. But in that case, that's what a thousand people looks like. So in a way, it's not modest at all, right? In a way, the idea that we can have a thousand followers, uh, that we could engage with a hundred people every morning uh, is revolutionary. This never existed for photographers before, or if it did, you needed the middleman, right? The gallerist, the publisher, and those uh, those middlemen for us here, True Social, are no longer there. So this is one of the first time that photographers have this opportunity, and that's why I'm so excited about sharing with you, and hopefully there are a few things you could take away from this that would allow you to really connect with, the, with these people, because they're interested in the same things that, that you are. And as I said, this is only really possible for me, I believe, because of Instagram. And it's grown tremendously over the, it's doubled over the last two years. Today there are around 800 million um, active users on Instagram. And it's the largest photographic platform of all time. Never has anything for photography exist like this. Never has there been a gallery this large or a publication with this much distribution. And we have direct access to it without the middleman, right? So it's, it is also a social network for photography. And I think that's the coolest thing of it all, like as, as, as a photographer. And so I really believe we need to be part of it. And I think we're beyond the point where we believe Instagram is just for teenagers or just for pic pictures of foods and cats. I think we are between that. And we need to get going because in the next 12 to 18 months, I believe more and more people are going to be there and we might lose the opportunity to really you know, establish ourselves there and it might get even harder in 12 months time to, to connect with people and to grow a following there. So this is the right time really to get involved. And, and to share our work on this platform. A bit about me briefly before we get in, get in there. I've been passionate about photography and marketing for all my life. I've been an entrepreneur most of my life, starting up a number of businesses. Um, but I'm also a fourth generation photographer. Um, my grandfather, my great grandfather's a photographer, my grandfather's a photographer, and my, was, and my father's a photographer. So I was always born into, uh, into photography, but I was brought up on a small island of Malta. Shout out to everybody in Malta who might be watching this <laughs> evening. And, but really, it was a time right without social media uh, and without smartphones. And the idea that I can connect with photographers from all over the world just wouldn't even occur to me. So I didn't pursue that part. Um, I, I went into tech, started up uh, some tech companies, started up a marketing agency. And only until the last few years, two to three years specifically, did I begin to realize this might be possible. And it works really well for me because it's a combination of my passion for marketing and my passion for photography. And when I discovered Instagram, for me, everything changed because I was able to start sharing. I, over the last six months, built or uh, founded my family photography business in Vancouver, BC. And it was only because of you know, my confidence in Instagram as a platform, as a marketing platform, that I was able you know, to, to, to make that move. Um, so there's my, <clears throat> there's my grandfather in the bottle there using his Photoshop skills from Adobe CC circa 1900. <laughs> and on the right, his, his studio in Malta. Um, my dad tells me that the plate camera in the studio is a Globus Stella camera. Is it correct to say that anybody here? Um, I, and the bottom left, that's my dad visiting us in Vancouver, and my daughter, who is the fifth generation photographer, <laughs> who will be here in BNH event space in a couple of years' time, talking about what God knows what social network <laughs> she'll be talking about then. So, so as I said, let, let, let's break that down a little bit in terms of this framework. And I hope this makes it a bit simple. Like it breaks down the concept of 1,000 followers in 90 days. That really means 11 followers a day. Or if you want to take 180 days, then it's five followers a day. And that's a goal. That gives you an incentive to make a, get into a habit, get into a workflow of coming on Instagram every day for 30 minutes. And what do you do in those 30 minutes? So I went to break it down a bit further. I believe. As a percentage, 
you know, five, around 50% of those followers are gonna come from discoverable features. And the discoverable features on Instagram are the features like hashtags that you can use that uh, allow other people to discover you, to discover your post. So I'm gonna go into more detail about what are the most key discoverable features that you should be using. I'm kind of cutting through the noise too for you because there are many other features and there are many other pieces of advice, but one of my goals is to really cut through the noise and highlight to you the ones that worked for me and that I think you could be using. The <clears throat> Most of the rest of your followers are gonna come from engagement. So this uh, engagement is something that happens after you post, and it's about reaching out to the community. And it's about engaging in conversations, giving value to other people, commenting, making uh, your voice heard, and through that, other people will come to you because they get to know you. And collaboration. <clears throat> I think collaboration will grow over time. It is all about reaching out to other people and doing things together, from the most basic form of tagging each other to going off and doing shooting together, doing long-term <laughs> projects together, and then uh, you know leveraging each other's audience for mutual benefit. So I'm going to go into detail on on these three uh, to give you as many tools as possible that you can use to you know, go into your workflow and get your 10, 11 followers a day. And this is what I said, what I believe. Uh, Austin Klein has two really, really good books. Uh, one of them is Show Your Work, and the other is Steal Like an Artist. And it's all about sharing your work and not being too fancy about your photography, even though it is amazing. I haven't seen all your photography, but I'm sure it's amazing, but it also deserves to be seen because really you get the human value out of that when you share it with other people. So share what you love and the people who love the same things will find you, right? So it also works in a selfish way um, and just the way your community works. You know, let's go out, let's give, let's share, and then that will always come back to us. So that's really the premise of the philosophy of what I'll be saying or, or maybe the mindset. And what that means is the first thing, first and foremost, that we should be doing is sharing. Before we can grow, before we can hashtag, before we can comment and engage, really the first step always has to be kind of sharing your work. <coughs> to share your work, you need to have work, so you need to be out shooting. So I'm gonna come into a, a bit of a workflow, but also <clears throat> there's that mindset about shooting and sharing and what's stopping you from doing that. And the thing that really stopped me for a long time was this idea that my work doesn't look as perfect as those other people on Instagram. And there's this uh, mental block to, you know, so many people are going to see my work, it needs to be perfect, I don't have that color coordinated feed. This is Brandon, Brandon Wolfel in New York, don't know if you know him, but uh, love his work, but very consistent, you know, consistent across style, genre. Uh, subject, his perspective, his mission, his, his colors, and he has uh, almost two million, two million followers. So um, what, I, what I really wanna, wanna say today is that uh, I think that this is a myth that you need a consistent aesthetic field to grow your following, especially to do that in the ways, in the meaningful ways that, that you want to do it. I don't think you need a consistent feed to grow your audience because the idea of consistency is so arbitrary and it can, you can be consistent along so many axes. For example, you can be consistent just by style and not genre. You could be consistent by your mission and your the reason you're posting. So for example, uh, Martin Parr is one of my favorite uh, street photographers and he's got 300,000 followers and when you when you look at his feed uh, I don't think you have that you know aesthetic consistency that you have in Brandon Wolfel but there's something there that's connecting all all his work and maybe it's his, his subject maybe it's his genre and maybe it's just his point of view and the way he sees the world but he's still having incredible success on Instagram and he doesn't have this fully stylized aesthetic uh, consistent aesthetic. Uh, another example with Gary Vee, one of my favorite kind of internet uh, um, entrepreneurs and um, authors. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, he's got three million followers, almost double brand of Brandon Wolfel, and he doesn't have that aesthetic feel. Uh, uh, feed. His consistency comes from his mission. He wants to educate and inspire people and the type of posts he uses maybe, his memes and, and videos. But the point I'm trying to make is 
um, I think there is a bit of a myth that I need to have this visually aesthetic consistent feed you know, to get followers on Instagram, and that's not the case. And, and so you're better off just sharing your work and not worrying about that than losing time thinking about trying to make it perfect, because it's only when your work is out there that you're going to start getting the meaningful feedback that, that you want from this. Um, one, one final example, um, the idea of this, you know, the lifestyle blogger, uh, the influencer that have these beautiful, consistent feeds. You know, let's drop the idea that as photographers, we're ever going to be like that. First of all, um, living with Landon on the left, uh, um, kind of lifestyle influencer, and Jesse Driftwood, who I love. So as a photographer, you know, Landon is in her photos. So she's not, first of all, a lot of these people, these influencers that with these amazing feeds don't, you know, are in their own photos. So they're, unless they're self-portraits, and in many of Jesse's cases, like they are, um, and you know, having run a marketing agency, you know they hire marketing agencies to manage their feeds. So don't let it get you down because you see people gaining followers, and you think, oh, I'm going to need a, a feed like that to gain followers because they are. I think for photographers, it's um, perfectly possible to you know to just get sharing and not have to get wound up about having the consistent feed. And I think Jesse Driftwood does that. Um, uh, really just just shares, shares his life, shares his stories, and these two have exactly the same amount of followers, 80,000 at this time of, uh, uh, as we go to press, and, and so it's possible either way. Um, so let's get into then getting out there and um, the basics before we even start trying to grow, getting the basics in place. And that for me consists of, you know, shooting and sharing, so the workflow that you want to put in place to get to get yourself into a point where you're consistently able to share, brushing up the basics on your Instagram bio, a few fundamental pieces you should definitely have, and the timing, when should I post, and maybe have a few questions about that, so using the analytics to figure out when you should be posting. The basics for me for a workflow, first and foremost, is try to shoot once a week. Try to, whether you are already doing that or not, try to uh, shoot for one hour a week. I put it in my calendar, and um, when I was, before I moved to Vancouver, I was living in London, UK, I used to shoot in my lunch break once a week, and it's definitely doable, because you shoot once a week, and then the next step is you can edit once a month, and you'll have enough images for 30 days, right? Because we're looking to post once a day. And again, in many ways, this goes back to it's not perfect. I don't have 30 images. But we're trying to shift the mindset here. We're trying to get into a point where we have materials that are maybe interesting stories, interesting points of view on something that allows us to share something once a week. So you can adjust these frequencies based on your own you know, objectives. But the, the pillar of the workflow really is based around trying to schedule time to shoot regularly, batch edit, so um, you are maybe editing once a month, and that might give you a bit more consistency. So, so when you're editing, you're maybe placing your photos into a group, uh, into collections, photos that might have similarities with each other, maybe on colors, maybe photos that are black and white, photos that tell a particular story, um, or photos that convey a certain feeling. And then you're getting a bit closer towards maybe having the consistent feed without going over the top. So I, um, I was shooting for one or two hours a week, editing once a month. And then the next step, taking my exports, putting them onto Dropbox, uh, having Dropbox on my phone, right? And then when I get to post, I can post onto Instagram from the file that I have in Dropbox. And that was my workflow. Many people like to shoot straight from their phone. You know, I, uh, in terms of my feed, I, and I love shooting with my Fuji X100T, you know, my street photography. So I love shooting with that camera. And I love uh, then spending some time in Lightroom. So that, that was my workflow. So I, I shot, I Lightroom edited, and exported to Dropbox. And then, because you can't upload images to Instagram from your desktop, Right, 
you need a solution on your phone. And so then you have a portfolio folder and Dropbox on your phone that you could attach to Instagram when you want to post. Does that make sense? So the, the, in terms of the posting part of the workflow, there are a number of apps that you can use to schedule the posts, right? And so if you're, if you're, uh, if you're editing once a month and you've got 30 images, potentially what you can do is then upload all those images into the app and schedule them for once a day. So literally, you don't need to go anywhere you know, near posting for the next 30 days. And I think that's an optional step, but there are a number of apps that do that, like Schedulegram, and uh, Later, I believe, and Planoli. So there are a lot of options out there if you want to schedule, uh, schedule your posts. <coughs> And that, you know, 90 days, three months, so you only need to do that three times, guys, if you want to get a 1,000 followers, right? It's, that e <laughs> it's not that easy. But um, as a system, I like to have a system and a routine because it makes, you know, I don't need to reinvent the wheel every day to figure out how I'm going to grow my Instagram account. I'm going to figure out my workflow and keep it as simple as possible. Um, so yeah, so posting, I think, is the first step and the fundamental first step because it all comes from there. The other basic element to look at is your bio, which is the first thing people see when they're considering, when they're really in the consideration stage of following you. So they've seen your image, maybe they've found it in a hashtag feed, and then they've come to your bio. And this is when you can convert them into a follower. So we just want to make sure we've got the basics in place. On the left is my bio. Many times um, in workshops, for example, I do critiques of people's feeds and bios, and I see a few of the key elements missing, and that's all I want to highlight now. You know, on the right is what you get when you go to edit your profile. You know, there's the photo, the name, the description, and the URL. And all of these elements should be, you know, should be fill, you know, filled up. Uh, the profile picture should be human, I believe, because we're on a social network. I see a lot of people with uh, logos or uh, one of their own pictures, uh, but I really believe because this is a social network that your profile picture should be a picture of you, because we're asking somebody to follow me to make to make that personal connection and to build that relationship with. So. Um, I would consider uh, checking what you've got there in your bio, trying to see if you've got a picture of yourself to put up in your picture. Uh, the name should be the real name. Uh, I see a lot of people coming up with kind of fancy, you know, like, it's okay. Yeah. So it could be like Steve Attard Street Photography, but really, uh, when I really analyzed uh, most successful people on Instagram uh, and photographers on Instagram, it was always their name. And your name is your personal brand, and, uh, and, and that's really what you're trying to connect. And again, it's social and personal, so kind of keep it personal. You know, I go to a party, meet someone, they're not going to tell me, hi, I'm street photography Tom. <laughs> it, it, so they say, hi, I'm Tom. Uh, it would, I don't know if I'd want a very deep relationship with Tom. It's a bit weird. So try and think about that in a similar con context, and I think you will succeed, because that's, that's what it's for. And, and the description, like, look, I use emojis in the description. I think it helps. Um, uh, it helps certain aspects stand out and makes things a bit more interesting. That's not obligatory. And, and the URL. So this is the, the, the URL is the only place in Instagram where you can post a link. You, you can't link people out of Instagram in your comments, in your comments, in your captions, in your comments. That's the only place where you can post a link on Instagram. So use it wisely. And the best thing about it is you could change it whenever you want. So right now, um, Steve and I, with Photo Educate, we've launched the Photo Educate, the ultimate guide to photography workshops. Um, shameless plug coming up. It's, uh, it's a 70-page document written by uh, workshop leaders from all over the world about how to make the most of the photography workshop experience. And we put a lot of work in it, and we're proud of it. So I'm linking to it here on my profile, and I'm putting those arrows pointing down. And when that, when, when I, you know, when there's something else coming, I can change that up. I might launch a promotion on my family photography business and put up that up there. So kind of it's constantly changing around. In the most simple form, you can point that URL to your website, to your portfolio or uh, any, any resource you want people to go to. So just be conscious of the fact that's the only opportunity to you know, maybe convert uh, your people coming to your profile into, uh, into another site and make the most of it. 
And finally, um, in terms of posting, like a lot of people ask me, when's the best time? When's the best time to post? And because of the changes in, in the algorithm that Instagram is no longer chronological, I don't think this is as, as important as before because Instagram will still show your images to someone who they think you know might find it interesting when they log in, not when you post it. So I think it is less important, but there is a time timeliness is an element of you know how many how, how your pictures get shown. And especially the initial amount of engagement you get on a post, like the initial amount of comments and likes in a very short amount of time is telling Instagram that you might be onto something here, that your post might be popular because it's getting a lot of engagement in a short amount of time. And then it begins to show it to other people. So it is useful to be conscious of the time that your followers are online when you post. But you don't have to guess because on top of your profile where you have, it, okay, step back. There are analytics that you could get access to if you convert your profile to a business profile. And there's no costs, no friction related to doing that. It's very easy to do. But if you activate a business profile, basically you get access to the advertising features. You get a few buttons on your profile like message and call and you get access to the analytics. So it's one thing you want to consider if you want to take this a bit further to, uh, to convert your account to a business profile. And there are very clear instructions on how to do that on the Instagram help pages. And then that will give you access to, for example, these features, which are the analytics, which really help me get a sense of when my uh, followers are online. Now, I have, and many of you will have, one issue, which is the time zones. So if I have here um, people following me in the United States, I used to live in the United Kingdom, and I, you know, so I kind of have a few followers there. There's Malta above Canada. Never that never happens in rank rankings, of, but in my Instagram feed it happened, <laughs> and Italy because it's so close to Malta. So, uh, but that's an issue in terms of time zones. So when I see you know, 9 a.m., if that is like my local time, then it might be some, uh, completely different for someone on the other side of the world, and they might be on, online at 9 a.m. So I don't know how useful this is, to be honest, and I actually like because of this mix, but it might be useful to, uh, to you if, you know, it, it maybe you have a much more homogenous um, following in that sense. Um, but the only way to get this data is to, you, you need to gather a bit of data first. So what I'd suggest is, you know, do your first 90 days. And when you're either scheduling your posts or posting your work, try posting them at different times. Try being a bit all over the place. Because then you're gathering data across the whole spectrum, spectrum and the analytics will show you how things are averaging out. So for your first 90 days, try, um, try posting starting from, you know, like 7 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. Try try scheduling things and all getting up early and you don't <laughs> no obligation uh, so I mean when you look at my my uh, statistics here you know you see very early in the morning I was posting very frequently around 8 a.m. I found that to be to be very good because you know people are going on their commute um, but that that would be different for everyone but the the main tip here is to keep it mix it up for the first 90 days gather the data and then use that as you move forward so I call that the basics, I guess. I hope that's uh, been useful so far. And because we can't really do anything else until we post. Now, we'll get to, uh, I want to get two questions and answers at, you know, at the end of the presentation, because maybe you want to you know, consolidate all this. And I know there's a lot of information um, to, to run through. And if you're watching back home, you, know, you can always replay parts of this to try and figure out what I just said. Um, but so I'll take I'll take questions um, uh, at the end of the presentation. But once we've posted, it becomes really important to make your work discoverable, because as we said earlier, Instagram is no longer going to show your work to to everybody who's following you. And we, you know, to grow our audience, we want our work to reach people who are not yet following us and not yet aware of uh, aware of us. And that's the concept of being discoverable. What are the features that we can make use of? to make our work more discoverable. And I'm going to look into hashtags, um, places, so tagging your work by location, 
um, collaborating with other people, other photographers on Instagram and sharing your Instagram post on other social media platforms where you have maybe following followings in other platforms. So those are the main areas that are gonna that I'm gonna touch upon because from my experience those are where the biggest drivers for me to get people to discover my work. And so before we go out to be discoverable, you know, who do we want to discover us? Because everybody's out there. And so it's a, it's a concept of knowing your audience. So for example uh, let's say I'm a street photographer and I want to connect with other street photographers. What are the ways that I can use to make sure that like my stuff is getting seen by you know other street photographers, not people who might be interested in landscape photography because we might not connect on that front. And there are these three areas that uh, you can use to research uh, other photographers with similar interests. One is, is hashtags, naturally. So if I go on the search function of Instagram and I search for street photography, then immediately I'm going to see photographs by photographers who must have some level of interest in street photography because they actually manually went out of their way to tag their photo with the hashtag street photography. And then you could use your um, subjective judgment to decide whether or not that's the case. Some people might just be spamming, but that's a great place to start. And you begin to build up um, a, a series of hashtags or a bit of insight into who that audience is and what else they might be interested in by looking at those people's profiles, looking at the kind of stuff people are posting. And that's going to be important information for you that to use later when you begin to tag your own photos. Um, I also like to use uh, places. Uh, so if if I go into the search function, and I can also search by place and location, right? So we're here at BNH, I can make a search for BNH or for New York City or for Vancouver in uh, the search function, and I'm gonna get a you know, feed of photos uh, by people who have taken or who have tagged those photos of a particular place. And this is particularly useful if you're maybe running a local photography business or you're looking to connect with people in your local community that this is a feature that gives you access to local photographers. And I found that really useful um, for my family photography business, where I'm looking to connect with people who are posting and sharing in my local community. But it's equally valuable to see maybe are there any street photographers in Brooklyn or in you know, Manhattan who are doing things similar to me that maybe I can connect with. So it's a great resource to, to start the process of connecting with other people. And the, and the other one there is like accounts. So I could also search in the search function for other accounts, you know, people who, um, even organizations, so SP, uh, Street Photography International or SPI Collective uh, aggregate a lot of uh, street photography. And so by connecting with those accounts, you can open up uh, into other people who are interested in the same things as you. How do you look them up? How do you look up all of these? Uh, so whether you look up uh, an account or a hashtag or a place is all through the search function in Instagram, which is the magnifying glass. And that search function gives you access to um, looking for things by hashtag, by uh, uh, name of account, and by place. And so it's all there in the in one place. So let's get, to, let's get to hashtags because, yeah, I believe kind of uh, Tagging your photos is one of the best ways to make your photos or your posts discoverable. And choosing the right hashtag, though, is even more important. And so I use a tool called Display Purposes at displaypurposes.com. And what it does is uh, it, you input one hashtag, and it provides you with many others that are related based on Instagram data. And so it's looking at photos or posts that have used that hashtag and what other hashtags have they used. And not in the screenshot, but further down, it will show you how popular that hashtag is and um, how relevant it is to your initial search term. And that's always the balance that I use when choosing the hashtags to, to, to post. Because if I choose a hashtag that's too popular, then I don't think anybody's going to see my photo because, you know, on the feed of hashtags, if someone's, you know, if there are 100 posts a minute, hashtag cat, yeah. then as soon as I put my photo, no one, you know, even though it's a popular hashtag, I'm not going to get seen. So I'm looking for the right balance between not being too big and too small, 
but also being being relevant. And this is a good tool to use to to get your hashtags. The quote there says it all. You know, post with hashtags, at least one hashtag average average twelve percent more engagement. And you know, from my experience, that's definitely true. Um, you can use up to thirty hashtags, and you could now. Since Instagram uses hashtags as a way of understanding what your post is about, it's better that you lose, use less than 30 as lo to make sure that the hashtags are relevant to your post. So if there are 30 relevant hashtags, use them. Make the most of the fact that you could use 30 hashtags because that's getting you into 30 different fee feeds. But um, if you know, don't just spam the hash 30 hashtags just because you should. You're better off using only three or five, and the sweet spot at the moment seems to be, you know, 12 to 20. But this is changing all the time. But just to be aware of the principle that the hashtags you use are being used to decide who sees your photos. And then if your photo gets seen by someone who deems it's not relevant and they don't engage with it, it's going to just drop down the rankings and it won't grow. So you want to try and get that engagement going. And one of the ways to really get that engagement going is making sure the people who are seeing your, your post are going to find it relevant. So just be conscious of that when you're, when you're tagging your images. Similar, similar approach to places and locations. The same tool, Display Purposes, uh, provides this map of where people are posting on Instagram. And that's my that's Vancouver. That's my neighborhood. Uh, and as I said earlier about places, this might be more relevant to some people as it is to others. But it, in terms of connecting to local photographers, I think it's really exciting to find street photographers in my neighborhood. And I don't think anything like this has ever existed before, that we could so easily connect with other photographers in our community who are interested in the same things. So there's the BNH photo location. Uh, there's the map, but under it, there are images that people are tagging uh, with, with their location at BNH. So we're talking about like making your work discoverable. You could tag your, fo your photo with a hashtag. You can also tag it with a place at the same time, right? So you're doubling, not doubling maybe, but always increasing the reach, potentially, that you get. So these are assets, tools that are there for you to use. Um, hashtags, places, just uh, try and be conscious of using them to, to improve your discoverability. And it's the same for me with tags and mentions. On the left here is a, an account, we from New York, who that featured one of my New York City photos, and they tagged me at the bottom here, right? So they have a couple of tens of thousands of followers. All the followers saw my account, and a very few of them came, you know, and followed me. But that's the two a day that I need, you know, to to hit my goals. So there is an idea that if you get featured on these big accounts, like your life is going to change and the windfall will happen. But it's from my experience, it's really not the case. But it is again, you're looking to step by step two by two, five by five, grow your account. And so what you can do to get their attention is tag them to your images when you post something. So we mentioned uh, SPI, Street Photography International. Uh, rather than just a hashtag, you can also uh, mention them or tag them to your photos. And the admin or the owner of that account might see that pop up as a notification, then might feature you in their feed. And you know that's always going to, uh, you know. So, so when you see my name down here and this image, this is an image that we from New York posted. It's one of my images. They added this color tint to it because their whole feed is like that. And in the description, they wrote at SR photo. So that's a tag when you have the at and your account. So this account tagged me. And so anybody who's seeing this can click on that. So any of their followers, 10,000, 20,000, I don't know, kind of can click on that and come to my account. So it's uh, creating awareness of me among their following. And so to get their attention, what I had done is I had tagged them in my 
hashtags when I posted this photo. So, um, you know, I'm using 30 hashtags, but then I'm also tagging accounts like this that has the potential of featuring me in that and feed. How do you tag? You, to tag, you simply write out the at sign and the name of the account that you want to tag, and it will automatically populate as a link. So that's, that tag is part of the caption. It's just simple text, but because it has the at sign at the beginning of it, Instagram recognizes that username and creates the hyperlink. Like, like I had SPI put me in their post. Yeah. Right. So I could have done something. I, I mean, they didn't do anything. Yeah. So if SPI or any of these accounts tag you in their posts, then you are getting seen by their followers. You don't need to do anything. Oh, yeah. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. No, the people will will come to you, and some of them might decide to follow you. Uh, on, on the right is, is Pat, um, I run, a, I run a, uh, like a photo walk in Granville Island in Vancouver, and I really have a great time kind of hooking up with people who are traveling, but also interested in photography and discovering Granville Island, which is a really eclectic, eclectic place, great for photography. But what happens, uh, you know, we have, so, we have a good time and um, we get some photos out of it. And, you know, when uh, these people go home, you know, they kind of post the images from their experience. And in this case, Pat kind of ta tagged me uh, to the image. It, when you're, you know, when you're posting an image, you see this little person icon in the bottom left. That's a way to tag someone in the photo. Now, strictly speaking, what the re that's so that you could tag the person in the image. But what many people do is they tag other people too to get their attention. So in this case, Pat was kind of crediting me for, for the image and in the description saying, you know, had a great time shooting with Steve in, in Granville Island. But that's another way to, you know, you could tag other people to bring them in, but, you know, other people can tag you and it makes you dis so discoverable. You punch, the, you punch the little figure? So, yeah, you just punch the little figure. I mean, not Pat. Uh, <laughs> the little figure down here. Uh, this little. That, that little figure is always there. Uh, 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 well, I mean, I might be corrected by the internet or by people here. Yeah, that I don't know if it only pops up when there's a face or not, but you don't need to do anything to, to get access to that. That's there, and then you pick from a list of, of users who you want to tag in the image. So, but, so the, the concept here is kind of all these tools that you have at your disposal every time you post to try and increase the visibility of you know, people seeing you. Because if I tag someone in my post like this, and then you know, they see it, and then their followers can see it, and potentially you're, you're kind of growing from there. So that was some level of collaboration. You know, Pat and I, there's a, a collaboration there where we uh, uh, kind of tagged each other, got seen by each other's followers, and we both kind of grew a little bit. I really, I'm really excited about the idea of much deeper collaborations. And this is the, what I mentioned earlier about uh, writing this ultimate guide to photography workshops. And as part of our new kind of photo educate project, but we, we published it in collaboration with Photo Shelter. Many of you knew, know Photo Shelter. It's a great place kind of to host photography portfolio websites. And they have a, you know, a community of photographers that use their product. I think their community is around 80,000 strong, 80,000 photographers. You know, but this was like, this was a lot of work to write that guide. Um, but at the end of it, we published that guide on, to the photo shelter community. They posted on their Instagram account, right, their Facebook account, you know, tagging Photo Educate, mentioning our, our brand, they tagging Photo Educate in the description. And out of this experience, we got around 80 new followers to the Photo Educate account. And so from, from just you know, going out maybe with a client, getting them to tag you, doing a kind of I mention you and you mention me type of collaboration, this is what we can do when maybe we take things a bit deeper. Whether there's something you can contribute to someone like Photo Shelter or anyone else that has a larger audience than you, 
maybe not too large, maybe someone who has a similar level or slightly larger audience than you, but maybe have something to give. Maybe they are a blogger and you are a photographer and you offer your photography services in exchange for a feature on their um, you know, on their account, and then some of their followers will discover you and come to you. And you could take that as deep as you like. You could get into some really interesting projects, you know, hook up with other photographers, go and shoot together, um, pool with a, lot, a few other photographers, get access passes to the parade, and you know, all go together, or write something or take a video. So, so the you know, the ideas are endless, but this is probably one of the best ways where you can really grow your following at a much larger scale. So in this case, even though it was a, you know, a couple months work, um, it was 80 new followers, but, and also the brand going out there and new relationships and all that. So um, you can take this as far as you want to, but you have these ideas and principles that you can use if you really want to dedicate the time to then go further in you know, growing your account. So, before I move on to engagement in terms of discoverability, the last real opportunity, uh, so a, a lot of people say, I, I don't have any followers, I, I can't grow, but I have you know, 2,000 people on Flickr or on, or on Facebook, um, or 100 people, but there are you know, people who like my work, but they're on another platform. So, you really should use the sharing functions on Instagram to share your Instagram work, on the other platforms, so those people on the other platforms can come to your Instagram account. And again, we go into the magical top three button dots in the top right, which will open up this menu that will give you two options. One is to copy the link to your post, and once you've got that link, there are different ways that you can use it. You can e email it to people, you can share it on Facebook, so I do suggest if you have new posts on Instagram, share them on your other platforms, especially if you're trying to get your Instagram account going. And wherever you have an audience, you know, share there, start from there, and start bringing those people over to Instagram just to get things going. You also have the option to share on Messenger, right, on Facebook, so that's even, e even easier. Also, the bottom arrow, takes you to, you, allows you to send that image to somebody on Instagram. So if you know these people might be interested in your work, but you know because of the algorithm, they might not see it, then make it a little, little habit of posting something, sending it to a few people, to, hey, check out my new post, let me know what you think. And you're also getting things going a little bit. Uh, you know, if they come in and they like and comment, things begin to pick up and, um, you're making sure that you know the people who you want to see it are more more likely to see it. So um, I'm going to move on to engagement. And I think discoverability is a bit passive in the sense that yes, yeah, you're you're putting things out there, but now it's time to kind of reach out and really engage with the community. And a lot of people tell me I'm posting a lot, I'm tagging, but I'm still not getting new followers. And especially because of the last changes that we spoke about in the, in the algorithm, I think it's gonna be over time like less and less easy to get new followers just by being discoverable because there are so many people out there being discoverable. And it becomes, and this is why Instagram or Facebook, I believe, are changing the algorithm in this way because they want people to engage. It's a social network and you only really get meaningful a meaningful experience from the network if you get that you know human engagement rather than like you know, sitting on your phone and not engaging with humans in any way I get. so engagement is really joining a community if you want to be accepted by a community you have to be first a good citizen of that community and what that quote also indicates to us is that engagement is definitely a two-way street but in a way, you're going to get most back when you give, right? So the first way to get people coming to you is by giving to them. And so I'm going to talk about kind of adding value to the photography community or whatever kind of micro or niche community that you want to, you want to engage in as the first way to really get that community to come 
to you. And what can you give? And I think there are a lot of things you can give to other photographers on Instagram and that you can share, whether it's a, you know, insightful, genuine compliment or a question to start a conversation or just to share your own point of view. So, uh, you know, someone's posted a photo, you know, what can I give? How can I add value here? So then, you know, I'm building relationships. And I think genuine is key, you know, but you're passionate. If you're, if you're looking at street photography or landscape photography and you're passionate about that, like you're gonna have things to say. So don't hold back, like you can, you can say it because the other people out there are also gonna be passionate and they wanna join in on a conversation. And for me, this is like really the pillar to growth because it's about joining that community. And every time you comment, you know, more and more people are gonna, are gonna see you and get to know you and you build your relationships that way. So um, who, before I do, go into like, how do I engage? It's like, how do I find people to engage with? And we covered this a bit earlier in terms of going to the hashtag feeds. Um, and I'm gonna dive just uh, a little bit deeper. So again, this is Martin Parr's account. Martin Parr, if you're watching, you know, check out my profile. <laughs> um, uh, but there are two ways here that I find really interesting. So I want to find people who like or are similar to Martin Parr because, you know, I love Martin's work and chances are if you're following Martin Parr, you love his work too. So that's a basis for us to connect. Again, it's like going to a party and someone standing there saying, I love Martin Parr, come and talk to me. Like, it's awesome because I love him too. Um, so there are two, two main ways here to do that. When you're on somebody's profile, you have the option of clicking to see who follows them, right? You also have the option of clicking that little downward arrow that would open up the suggested profiles. Have you seen that before? And the suggested profiles, again, it's the uh, Instagram algorithm trying to understand um, who else is similar or might be interested in this, in this follower, and, uh, in this uh, account. And I really suggest you to use that and to engage with and follow those people first and foremost because you're beginning to, to, to grow your network. And on large accounts like Martin Parr, you'll get other large accounts. But if you're looking at a profile of someone who has a similar level of following than you do, maybe a street photographer in your local community, then you're more likely to see other street photographers in your local community in the suggested um, profiles area. And I, I um, and then I you know, go into the list of people who's following them and start engaging with those people. So follow the red arrows, right? <laughs> and on the left is another example where I can find people who like Martin Parr. In this case, rather than those people who are following him, it's people who liked this particular photo. And I think we're just getting a bit deeper now because this is an account that I follow, a person who I admire, and this is an image that I like that might be similar to my style, my genre, my kind of images. So maybe the people who like that might also like my work. So I'm increasing my chances of uh, converting those people as followers because we're like interested in the same thing. So if I click on the likes, then I get the list of people who liked that photo. And what I want to do is dive deeper into those accounts. I, um, I don't want to recommend that you just follow everybody because that's spam and it just doesn't work anymore. I mean, six months ago, you could have built your Instagram account to 100,000 simply by following and following people for a few hours a day. And then, you know, when you follow someone, the notifi notification comes up, someone followed you, you look at, oh, that's nice, thank you, and you follow them, but they don't really care. They're just following you to grow their account. So we're trying to build a genuine Instagram following, and that's not gonna help us, because we're just gonna end up uh, with people following us who just don't really care, and we're not gonna get anything out of that, except for being able to tell our friends or our kids that we're so cool because we've got <laughs> a few thousand followers, which works on some, some level. Um, but so, but what you can do instead is, you know, click on click on their profile, and if there's anything you like there, and chances are there are, but if there isn't, like, it, it needs to be genuine. Go back to that slide that I showed on, you know, what can I do? So pay a compliment, ask a question, uh, engage with that person, and and then follow them. 
You know, I was talking earlier before this presentation about somebody in this room who I just followed. And the, the approach that I did was there was a post on BNH's Instagram about this talk, and there were about 40 likes. So I decided to see who those people were who liked it, because that's something that we really have in common. The, are we following? <laughs> and, and so that's a really good starting point to do it in a much more genuine way. But what I like to do, I like to see their, their photography and in many cases, like, depending on the time now, to be completely honest, I don't. But if I have the time, you know, to like and to comment, but on those, on those people's accounts, because I know for sure that we've got something in common. So it's a great, great starting point. And finally, the slide on the right is people who have commented on a picture you can join in the conversation. And that's a good way to start engaging with people. If there is a conversation going in an image, you can you know, join into that conversation, reply to comments, like the comments, and then also follow through, click on the profiles of people who are commenting. We know we've got something in common. And that's a really great place to start. And you could begin to see. So if I'm doing 20 of these engagements every day, and they're deep engagements, they're not random. You know, how many of these people are going to maybe check out my profile and follow, follow me back? Maybe if I do 20 or 30, I might get five, you know, I might hit my targets. But actually, I'm getting a lot of fulfillment too, right? So yes, I'm systemizing it, but I'm really passionate about photography and street photography, so I love doing this. Right? And if you're into sports photography or landscape photography, like, this is something you love anyway. So you're also going to get a lot of fulfillment out of it. Finally, um, there's a, a nifty feature around uh, post notifications, because you might follow a lot of people, but you uh, not always see their latest stuff, because again, Instagram is choosing what to show you. But if you go to the magic three dots in the top right of somebody's profile, if there's somebody you want to follow, I really recommend going to the bottom of that menu and turning on post notifications. And what that's, that, that does is it sends you a notification on your phone, the minute, the second, this person uh, posts something new. And that opens up quite a few interesting possibilities. First of all, you follow her, you, po you, you comment, and then Martin Parr is going to be like, who is this Steve Attard posting on every one of my images? <laughs> Let me block him. <laughs> um, but I've had some very meaningful engagements with established photo like photographers who I admire, just because, you know, if they get a thousands of comments, but they might still be online reading the first few, you have more chance of kind of getting noticed. But, you know, really in the, in the more practical sense, if you're following a thousand people, but there are 20, 30 people, you know, that mean more to you, then go and turn on post notifications so that you could be sure to see and catch and follow their, their work. And again, back to the analytics, I don't need to go into it in too much detail, but the analytics help you track your progress, you know. You're doing your, your workflow, you're trying to figure out what happens and, and get better at it. So the analytics will help you and get a sense of, as we spoke earlier, what time to post and all that. But for me, what's most exciting about it is getting feedback and, in a way, critique on your work. So Steve and I spoke about this in our uh, earlier presentation today, which you can also find online. Uh, you too. I mean, here you have access to <laughs> um, About um, creating a learning loop between going out and shooting, sharing on Instagram, and getting feedback. And in the past, this hasn't been easy. I mean, we're passionate about the workshop opportunity. So you go to a workshop and you get feedback from the instructor and from other participants. But now we can share our work on social media, on, an Instagra on an Instagram, and get a lot of different levels of feedback. Not only how many likes did I get, but more meaning, meaningful feedback, but the analytics are going to give you very immediate feedback on which of your photos are engaging better, and also within the context of the changes of the algorithm, which of your photos are getting the reach and the impressions because maybe they're engaging more with your, your existing followers. So check out the analytics features, you can only activate them if you convert your account to a business account. There are no costs to do that. Um, but they give you a bit more information about 
all the po photos that you've posted, how many uh, comments, likes, and then it rank ranks them. So you get an indication of um, which images are doing better than others, and you might be surprised. Like I've been surprised on a, on a number of occasions, and it just maybe you know, a uh, bulb goes off in my head saying, oh, I never really thought that that's a good photo, but when I look at it again, actually, and then you can follow up with the people who liked it and say, you know, what did you like about that? And get, get a bit of feedback from the, from the community. So, I hope that covers in a short, long, I don't know, we felt it, long, but amount of time. There's a lot of information, uh, a lot of things to learn, and whether you're a beginner or more advanced on Instagram, it's continuously changing. So I wanted to give you um, an outline of what I think are the key principles and techniques for us as passionate photographers to grow and engage. And if there's one thing I want you to take away from this is the principle that sharing and engaging is the key to growth. There's no, there's no real hack and there's no real you know, technical solution or you know, quick fix, but if you are ready to give and to share your work and then to engage, reach out and engage to the community, not be you know, static or passive about it, but get involved, then you will see your, not only the amount of followers you have growing, but also the satisfaction you get from, from using the platform. So listen, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it.